Brendan Kudla here live in BBTV with General Manager Rick Montine of the Bristol Blues. Just wanted to talk to you about opening night and how successful it really was. We got a 3-2 victory against the North Shore Navigators and it had been nice to see all your hard work in the offseason come to fruition there at opening night. Can you take us through your night and kind of how exciting it really was? How exciting it really was? Do you really want to know? I want to know how well, excited you, you how were it really outside was, of the Brandon. big old jumpsuit and tuxedo <laughs> you had was, rolling. Yeah, that was my 32nd opening night, okay? Of all 32, that was the craziest one I've ever had. One of the things that, that was going on behind the scenes, I don't even know if you knew, our home uniforms didn't arrive until 6.20. Oh, yeah. I was with the team waiting for yeah. the uniforms, and then we had the owner, Elliot Shiner, came in with the uniforms and said, here you go, guys. We're ready to go. I thought we were going to have to sport the gray unis to open out the season, but it was nice to see the boys in the fresh whites, that's for sure. The, the, the uniforms ended up looking great, but that was a little too close <laughs> for comfort, man. But, you know, that was one of the, one of the ma many manias that went on that night. We had a good time. I mean, it, it was a very successful evening. I think, you know, when you go through something like that, the goal is that people leave, one, with a smile on their face, and two, talking about it. And I can guarantee you that Anybody that was there had a good time, left with a smile, and they're talking about it. Well, they're definitely talking about a 3-2 victory on opening night. Doobie threw a gem out there for us, and we just scraped up enough runs to get a W. We had a lot of run-run wins so far this season. We do. It was, uh, you know, you want a good game. A route on opening night, that's okay as long as you're the you one who's doing the routing. <laughs> yes. If you lose a route on opening night, which... Uh, Back in the old Scranton Wilkesbury days, uh, we were pretty bad in the beginning, and we lost a, a ball game 16 to nothing with 11,000 people there. I don't think a lot of people that night were leaving going, oh, what a great time. I had a blast. This one, though, they, I think that yeah, everybody had a, had a good time. We had a good crowd, too, over 2,000 people out for opening night, right. hovering around the 1,000 mark for each game so far. With 4th of July coming up, it should be pretty cool to see how many fans we could pack into Muzzy Field again. Yeah, I, it's, for me, always the biggest day of the year, 4th of July. It's going to be great. we got the 3rd, 4th, and the 5th all ready for a firework display on the 3rd and the 4th, so you're going to have to make sure you come out and watch your hometown Bristol Blues. We'll take it to Jack right now as he's got another recap for opening night. The Bristol Blues, a summer collegiate baseball team, opened their gates Friday night to welcome friends and fans to a summer's night of baseball, hot dogs, and fun. The Blues have the city of Bristol rallying behind them over the span of a 56-game season ranging all over New England. The Blues' home field, historic Muzzy Field Park, hosted an array of activities such as jazz music, a masseur, historical figures, and the author of the book, Muzzy Field. Tales from a Forgotten Ballpark. Linda Ruth Tizzetti was in attendance for the unveiling of the Babe Ruth number retirement, as well as throwing out one of the first pitches for the Bristol Blues dynasty. Joining Linda was Noah Ferraro, the grandson of Jack Ferraro, the Blues' first season ticket holder and the Blues' biggest fan. Leading the Blues this season will be Barry Lyons, a former Major League catcher who is a part of the 86 World Series Championship Mets, Barry is a native of Biloxi, Mississippi, and managed several minor league teams up until the year 2002. When Barry finished managing, he decided to move back to Mississippi, where he focused on bringing minor league baseball back to his hometown. Starting for the Blues on Friday was Kyle Duby. Duby attends Fairfield University and made MAC Conference Honor Roll for his work on the field and in the classroom this season. Doobie went five innings, allowing two runs on four hits while striking out four and only walking one. Behind the dish and calling the signs for Doobie was Brian Dromerhauser. Brian is from Bayshore, New York and goes to Briarcliff Junior College. Brian was able to draw two walks in his first appearances at the plate. Austin Chauvin from San Ramon, California went 2 for 4 with two runs scored and a walk opening night to lead the Blues to their first victory at Muzzy Field. Shortstop Ryan Costello added two RBIs to his stat line to make the difference and give the Blues a 3-2 lead in the bottom of the seventh inning. Ty Robinson, the grandson of Bill Robinson, came in relief to earn the win pitching three and two-thirds scoreless innings with six strikeouts and only three hits. After Robinson allowed two base runners with two outs in the ninth, 
Michael Nocera, a Bristol native and alumni of Bristol Eastern, picked up the save by handling the final hitter of the ballgame. With a 3-2 Blues victory, the night ended with fans enjoying a spectacular fireworks display. Well, we know you're in an interview with Jack about the preseason festivities and getting ready for inaugural season. Do you have anything else to highlight about kind of what work it actually took in order to get a city thriving around a baseball team before its first year back in action? I think the first thing is, when you look at this interview, that tux is absolutely soaked. <laughs> <laughs> it's just part of the opening night festivities is I, I wear a tux and I get absolutely soaked. We, we had a lot of moving parts for this opening day. There was a lot of things. We, I mean, every, every, everyone, including yourself, that was there opening night had never been through one before. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. No. So training on the fly, 40, 50 people, was a pretty Herculean effort, if I have to say so. But it was, it was quite a monster. But getting ready for opening night, the only real concern is getting people to the game. Yeah. And I think we, we accomplished that. Oh, we did for sure. We had 2,000 fans night. there. And the way they all went out, too. A close game and a big victory. And everyone was pleased and happy with the effort and enjoyed the fireworks as well. You fireworks could, were great. Fireworks yeah. after opening night is almost a must-have. Get the fans out, the parents, and then even the kids can enjoy it. Even if they're not too into baseball, they get to see the big fireworks. Sure, afterwards. absolutely. You want to set the tone for the year. And you know, I, we did that well. I think everybody performed above admirably. I mean, it was a really good show. Um, from on the field to the concessions to the gates, everything I thought was A+. Plus. So, yeah, I thought I think the fans absolutely did too. too. Yeah. And the fans loved it. Yeah. Talking to people on the streets and being able to go out afterwards. And if they see a Bristol Blues polo or a hat, they're definitely saying good job and we like what you're doing. So yeah. the vibe around town has been pretty cool. Yeah, you know what? And the vibe around town about us serving beer. That's been pretty cool, too. <laughs> hey, it's a spot to go. Thursday night, dollar beers, come on out. Friday night. Friday night. Oh, right. messed Jeez. that one up already. Holy cow. Well, that's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Thursday night, it's only like $3. You can afford it, I promise. Don't worry about <laughs> it. And right now, we're going to go in and look at your interview with Jack here on opening night. Hopefully, we can't tell the tux is too soaked. What do you think baseball means to the city of Bristol? There's a lot of great baseball fans in this town. I'm re I was really surprised when I got to town of how many people are so passionate about the game. This is one of the unknown little gems in the country. This is a baseball hotbed. Big leagues, you got Cincinnati, you got St. Louis. Down here, you got, I mean, Bristol's right up there. There's a lot of great baseball fans in this town. I'm really fired up about it. Well, it's great because we have a great ownership group here. Um, obviously a beautiful facility, and we have a great community and a great mayor who's working with us. Uh, to make sure this is going to be successful. Um, and that's what we're looking for in the league. We're looking for three great things. We're looking for great facilities, great ownership groups, and, and great communities to work in. And Bristol's been dying for, uh, for baseball done right. Uh, Elliot and uh, the Lindlands are working really hard with Rick Muntine to make sure that this is a showcase for the, for the league, showcase team. And it's a great thing for the city. People are really excited. And I, I was talking about this earlier, that I can't believe the amount of they haven't had their first game yet at home, and the amount of blues gear that we've seen, hats and everything else around the, around the ballpark was yep. amazing tonight. What do you think baseball means to Bristol? Well, Bristol has loved baseball since the beginning of the game being here, you know, turn of the 20th century. There's been uh, plenty of opportunities for crowds to come out here at Muzzy Field and see games, you know, from the 1910s when the field first was created up until today. So they love baseball. I mean, the, the one thing about the collegiate baseball league that has come in, the Futures League with the Blues, these are guys on a higher level that are honing their skills in hopes of getting to the major leagues. So the quality of baseball has improved and with the marketing that has been behind this Blues team, I think people are more aware of it. So you combine those two things with a field like this, it's just a perfect combination. Well, we used to have the Bristol Red Sox and that was a big draw in town and I think this is great for everyone. There's a lot of people here and it's great to have a hometown team. I think it means everything. It's, 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 it brings all the family out. Everybody gets together, has a good time. There's, there's no violence. There's no drugs. There's it's just a good time for everybody. I, I think it's great. I think it's really great and I'm glad that Bristol brought it back. 
I think it's a great thing. Great. Community. I'm just glad that baseball's back in Bristol, and we can just you know bring the little kids here and not worry about nothing. Yeah. And everything's nice and cool and have a good time and. I just think it's great. Good summer activity really for do. everybody, for the whole you know, family, like and said, all ages, right? Yeah, I mean, the last time I did this is when I was like 14, 15 years old. Yeah. And when the Bristol Red Sox were here. What year was that? Ooh. Probably like 1975. Wow. Okay. 1976. Yeah. That was the last time I was here. See, how can you beat that? You cannot beat that. No, you cannot. You can't beat it. Thank you, Lenny, for your time. Jack, thank you. With opening day comes a lot of preparation. I was able to chat with author Doug Milan about Muzzy Field, and then GM Rick Montine and Commissioner of the Futures League, Chris Hall, about what the future has in store for the Bristol Blues. Do you want to talk a little bit about your book? Sure, yeah. The Muzzy Field, Tales from a Forgotten Ballpark, focuses on the early history of the field, meaning the 1920s up through the time that the Bristol Red Sox had a double-A team here. Most people are aware of that double A era mm -hmm. um, because it's the most recent right. professional team. But what a lot of people didn't know was, a lot, was everything that came before. And those were the appearances by Babe Ruth, mm -hmm. Vince Lombardi, yep. uh, the Green Bay Packers, on and on and on. I mean, yeah. the, the history is amazing, quite frankly, when you're talking about a field like this that is so accessible to fans. I mean, you could walk out there right now and stand where Babe Ruth stood. And to me, that's pretty cool. Well, there's a lot of details involved, you know, and believe me, this one was a rough one. There was a lot of, a lot of moving parts in this. Started in November, you know, started in November getting the word out. And had to, you know, you go out and you meet a lot of people, you shake a lot of hands, you invite them to the ballpark, and, and that, it, that's worked very well. I mean, you get, the payback is tonight. But educating all the people that are working here, educating all the people that, are just you know hourly guys tonight uh putting on the show behind the scenes it's it's a really large task and i think it went off pretty well tonight it took a lot but i think it it all paid off in the end i know you recently just expanded the league is any more expansions gonna happen uh, we're, we're looking at some of? options there's some things there's some things that we're looking at we're, we're looking at some stadiums that are in and around the area that uh, might be coming available mm -hmm. um we have a lot of interest um you know, in doing it, but we will only do it if, if it makes sense. Right. Um, we're looking at, uh, you know, some options where, you know, right now there might be a facility that might come available here soon. Uh, we'd have to find the right ownership group, and I think that community would be really good for us to go into. But, again, we'll only do it if it makes sense. We Absolutely. won't rush to just get it done. Well, we're going to, you know what, we're going to get a lot more aggressive in the promotional area. Okay. I mean, uh, now we, we're just, you know, this year let's see what we got. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to. We're going to have the, just the normal promotions everybody has, the dollar beer, the dollar hot dogs, the fireworks shows. We're doing all of that. And then eventually I want to get in a little bit into the wackiness. But Absolutely. it's all about getting groups together to come to the ballpark. It's a lot more fun to come to the game as a group, and that is what we're going to focus on from this moment forward. And I think the city of Bristol loves coming here. They love coming in groups. They love coming to support any baseball, let alone the Bristol Blues. I'm taking uh, the attendance up right now if you want to know. 2014 right. on opening night. 2014 on opening night, pretty good. Yep. I think that's what you estimated to the papers, wasn't yeah, it? Indeed, yep. Opening night for the Bristol Blues went off without a hitch. As the 2015 season continues, we look forward to seeing you and your family down at the ballpark. For BBTV, I'm Jack Capitorno. Thanks, Jack, for that segment. This is BBTV. I'm Brendan Kudlo with the general manager Rick Montine. You can watch all our games on rebroadcast here on Nutmeg TV on Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So tune in and enjoy your Bristol Blues baseball.